Good morning, folks. Happy Sunday to you. This is Triple Crown coming to you from Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm going to do a short little video today, a little customization, a little show you guys what uh, the poly dip that I've mentioned in previous videos. So I've kind of started halfway. And now what the poly does is it gives your units that dirt, that sort of weathered look, sort of a finishing look. Um, so when you've painted your piece, it has a look, but when you dip it, I think it sort of makes it that just that more authentic look. Now, just in my opinion, whenever you're doing this process, the dip method works better on lighter colors like the British yellow or the tan or the Japanese orange. But it, in my mind, it doesn't, or opinion, it does not look so good uh, on the darker grays or the blacks or the browns. So that I use a dry brush method to try and bring out the features. So this, um, I'll just show you the before and after. So this is the 3D sculpt from Historical Board Gaming. Now I've just dipped, these are freshly dipped. Uh, I can wipe them a little bit more, but you can kind of see it kind of really gives it that weathered look. Now I'll go through this process with you. So the paints that I've used to do this, this is the, uh, Doug specifically made these sculpts for, um, for Global War 1930. I've got the red uh, insignia patches on the shoulder. Um, and this is the authentic um, uniform for the South African infantry. Um, so I started out, well, first thing what you want to do is paint. So I've got these Tamiya paints, these, um, what I would call sort of authentic looking colors. So for the uniform, I use this, uh, desert yellow, um, kind of a khaki drab, sort of a light brown finish. Now for the base, now everybody has their different opinion on base. I went for a dark yellow, so it's a slightly different shade. For the backpacks on the back or whatever, um, sort of a gray green um, for sort of the little canteen and whatnot on the back. For the skin tones, this it's called flat flesh. Uh, the shoulder patches, uh, use the, the red, the flat red. And for the, the gun and the knife and the, I think there was something else I painted black, but um, a flat black. Now after, you, and this is just the poly, you can get this anywhere, Home Depot, um, different shades of it. I would recommend, this is a darker shade, I would recommend going a little bit lighter. Um, and this is my new brush from, it's actually a Tamiya, this is a Tamiya Paints, but you can see it's got a fine tip and it just seems to hold the paint um, just at the right, just, just the right amount of paint on the brush when I dip it in. And uh, it just allows me to get the final, um, the final sort of look that I want. Now, after you do all these paints that I just mentioned, you wanna let it cure for about 24 to 48 hours, depending on what paints you use. The Tinea paints dry pretty quickly. Um, and then you're safe to dip. And once you're, once you're done dipping, um, you'll find, as the unit I just, piece I just showed you, that sometimes the, uh, the poly tends to, tends to run out a little bit. Um, so you can wipe a little bit off as you go. You just basically want to get some in the cracks, make it look dirty, make it look weathered, give it some texture. So that's the whole purpose. Now painting the base, I had very difficulty choosing the color of the base. Um, and I just try, decided to go with the color I did is because I'm eventually going to get a South Africa roundel and do what I've done with this Italian unit and put it, um, that's the fascist uh, Italian, on the base to kind of identify. I think this looks a little, at least in my mind, I thought about doing the World War II, more of a flag color, the orange or the red or the blue with the, uh, the Commonwealth flag, but I just thought it was gonna take away from the sculpt. So that's why I've decided to go with a lighter base. So basically folks, uh, when you're ready to go, you just take your tweezers, you don't wanna drop it in, you grab it like that, and you just dip it in. That's why it's called dip, it's very quick. It's much much easier process than painting. Let me tell you, that takes a, uh, at least for me, a magnifying glass, a fine, 
And then you just kind of grab your rag and you just kind of get it off. Now, I made the mistake earlier on in this process. I left a little bit too much on uh, when I was first starting this out. Uh, and now I find that it's almost better to wipe uh, almost all of it off. Now, it does kind of have a shiny sheen. Right now, you can kind of see. Um, that's why you use the, uh, the finishing, after it's been dried for about 48 hours, you use this matte clear. Um, and that kind of... Uh, finishes it off. So that's the, the poly dip process, folks. Um, it's quite simple. Um, it's almost, uh, you know, something that anybody could do. Um, but I just want to close here and say that, you know, painting is something new that I've gotten into. Life can be hard sometimes, a lot of stress. Uh, sometimes some of us use physical activity to kind of de-stress. Some of us like to watch TV. So this is kind of a new hobby. And when I get in my painting mode, uh, I enjoy painting, uh, it's relaxing, it's kind of like reading a book, it kind of, you know, very peaceful. I put a music on or a podcast in the background um, so I can enjoy it. And then when the pieces are done, uh, the gaming experience as a whole is, um, joy. I enjoy using these units a lot more when they have a fresh coat of paint on them. So thanks for watching folks and happy Sunday, stay tuned.